The latest update for Simple Rockets 2 includes a new visual programming system, which we've nicknamed Visi. This will let you program your craft to automate basic flight tasks. To show you how this works, I'm going to take this rocket, which you may recognize. It's from the designer tutorial. And I'm going to walk you through how to write a Visi program to take it all the way from the launch pad to orbit. You can edit the flight program for your command pod by opening the menu here and clicking Edit Program. Now we're in the program editor. And on the left over here, we have the menu. And we have several different categories of blocks that you can use to assemble your program. And when you start a new program, you're always left with this on start block. Now, when you enter the flight scene, the on start block is executed. And then any instructions that are connected to it will execute after. So the first thing I'd like to do is have a little three second countdown. So let's do that. First, let's find this block called the display block. And we're going to make it say T minus three. And then after that, we're going to wait a second. And then we're going to display T minus two. And then we'll wait another second. And then we're going to display, you guessed it, T minus one. Wait one more second, and then we'll display blast off. In order to make the rocket blast off, we need to set the craft's throttle and make sure its heading is locked, just like in the flight tutorial. So we can find craft instructions here in the rocket category here, the craft instructions. So first set the throttle to 100%, and the number it's expecting here is between zero and one. If you try to set it to something else, it'll let you know that that's not right. Um, so it's actually one is 100%. So if you wanted to do something like 60%, it would be 0 0.6. But for right now, we want 100% throttle. Let's do a one. And then after that, let's lock the, let's see, the lock the heading on current. Because the rocket's going to be pointing straight up, so we just want to lock the heading the way it's currently pointing. And now it's time to actually ignite the engines and make the rocket blast off. So activate stage. Okay, so that was a lot of code we just laid down there. Let's test it out and make sure things are working so far. So we can do that by going here to the file menu and clicking save to craft. So that's going to take your current program and store it in the command pod. And now we can hit play in the designer to put it on the launch pad and we'll see what happens. So we can see the T minus three, the countdown's working, blast off. Things are looking good. Okay, let's get back to the program editor. The next thing we need to do is wait until the rocket is at one kilometer in altitude, and then we should start a gravity turn. So for this, we will use the wait until instruction, and we will plug in a comparison operator. And we need to get the crafts current altitude, which we can find right here. So this AGL, I'm going to change it to ASL, because I believe that's how the flight tutorial works. And we're waiting um, until we reach an ASL of above one kilometer. So that's a thousand meters. The gravity turn involves turning the craft so that it can start building up lateral speed. Um, we can do this with the set craft instruction. And here we want to set the pitch to 75 degrees because that's what the flight tutorial does. And we also need to throttle down to about 60% throttle. So grab the set throttle instruction here and the ranges are zero to one. So I'm going to do 0 0.6, which is 60%. Let's also add a display instruction here so we can get some feedback in the flight scene that the craft is starting its gravity turn. Okay, the next step of the gravity turn is very similar to what we just did. So I'm gonna copy and tweak. So you can copy a, an instruction or a chain of instructions by clicking on an instruction like this. And the button on the left is to copy a single instruction or on the right is to copy the entire chain. So we'll click and drag this. And then we're gonna go to 5,000 meters, pitching to 45 degrees. We're not going to adjust the throttle, so we're just going to delete that. 
and we're going to adjust the text to say pitching to 45 degrees. Okay, and the next step of the gravity turn is also very similar, so I'm going to copy this again, tweak the numbers, and the flight tutorial goes to 15,000 meters, and then it adjusts the pitch to 30 degrees. And it also sets the throttle back to 100%. So I'm going to copy just this one instruction, pull it down here, 100% throttle. Now the rocket continues like this until it runs out of fuel in its current stage. So we're going to grab another wait until block here. And we're going to get the fuel of the current stage. Just set that there for now. And then we're going to get a equal comparison. And we're checking if the fuel in the stage is equal to zero. So this is going to wait until that happens. Now, after the rocket runs out of fuel, it's good to wait a couple of seconds for the engines to completely power down. So we'll do that, and then we will activate the next stage. This will cause the, the boosters to separate. And then let's put a little display in there, too, so we can get some feedback and know what's going on. Let's actually put this above. The next step after that is to um, activate the next stage, which will activate the center booster. So let's grab this display. Whoop. Wait a couple more seconds. Activate this stage. Okay, now we got the center engine going. And the next step after that, I believe, is we're waiting until the apoapsis is 125 kilometers. So grab another wait until. Got to get the craft's altitude. And we're checking when it's greater than a certain amount, so we'll get that. Let's get the craft's altitude here. That's not craft altitude. We want to get orbit apoapsis. So throw that in there. Oops. So that'll wait until orbit the craft's orbit apoapsis is at least 125 kilometers. Okay, when that happens, let's spit out a message and to let us know we've reached 125 kilometer apoapsis. And the next step is to kill the engine. So we're going to set the throttle to zero. And then we'll wait a few seconds, take in the view, not display. Um, and then nobody really wants to wait for a long time, because the next step of the flight tutorial is to wait until you're 30 seconds to your apoapsis. Um, so we're going to speed up time. And first we're going to spit out another message. And then we'll grab the set time mode to time warp one. And then we're going to wait until we're 30 seconds from the apoapsis. So let's get that orbit condition here. And then we want to check and see if we're less than 30 seconds. The time to apoapsis is less than 30 seconds. You may be wondering why I didn't check and see if the orbit was exactly equal to 30 seconds, like this. Um, and the reason is, it's actually a bad idea to do that, because um, comparing something like a time to 30 seconds um, is, is very unlikely that would ever happen, that it would be exactly 30 seconds. Because the way the numbers are stored on the computer, it's always going to be something like, you know, as you get to that, be close to 30 seconds, it's going to be like 30.000001. And then the next, in the next frame, it may actually jump over, you know, jump under 30 seconds. So it might be 29.999, you know. Um, so it's actually a bad idea to, to check for exact conditions. It's better to use the greater than or, or less than operators. So put that back. 
At this point, we can set the time mode back to normal, and we can throttle back up to 100%. We also want to set our heading to make sure it's aligned with our direction of travel. So we're going to lock it on the prograde, which will make sure we're burning exactly aligned with the direction we're moving. And then once again, we're going to burn until the current stage runs out of fuel. So we're going to get another wait until, and we're going to get the equal operator and get the current fuel on the stage. We need to separate that center booster. Um, so we'll wait, let's wait a few seconds, make sure the engine's completely powered down. We'll activate the next stage which is going to cause that center engine to separate. Let's grab a display. Let's move it up above, there we go. And then let's wait a few more seconds before we activate that final engine. Some more text down here so we know what's going on when we're in the flight scene and watching this unfold. From here, we burn until we reach orbit. And so, how are we going to know when we reach orbit? Well, one way is we can just check the periapsis. So, we'll wait until the, the periapsis is greater than, let's say, um, 100 kilometers, which is how it's done in the flight tutorial. Now, once we get here, we need to throttle down, and then we need to open the solar panels, and we do that by activating the activation group nine. And so we, that we do that by setting activation group nine to true, and so there's a true right here. And then we can spit out a message to let to let us know that we've reached orbit. Okay, so that's it. So this should, if we save it to the command pod, and we launch, it should hopefully, if I did everything right, it should actually get us from the launch pad all the way to orbit without us having to touch anything.